Welcome to Haxby Shed. I'd like to show you how I made this three-phase wall outlet using my IMO Jaguar Cub inverter. Complete with emergency stop. I have two machines with three-phase motors which I will use only occasionally and never at the same time. So I'm going to share those machines on just this one inverter. I'm going to put the inverter around about here because that's a convenient position and I'm going to use these three phase connectors so I can swap the motors over quite easily. So I need to figure out how to mount this properly on the wall. That brick wall is all over the place so I need to mount the electrical equipment on a board. Something like this, something like this something like this. Now this terminal box is here, well it's just an empty box actually, because I need somewhere to mount the reverser switch. This unit doesn't have a front panel switch for reverse and forward, so I'll need this. This unit, this inverter, sticks out a long way because it's got a big heat sink on the back, which is good because there's no fan required but it does make it rather tall. Now the electrical connections are here. I'd really prefer to have those covered up and that might sit something like that. And then that might be like that. So for that to happen, I think what I'll do is I'll cut a hole in this board and bring this board further out. I've got some wood here which I can use to bring this board off the wall. And the advantage is I'll leave it open at the back and then the airflow can run over these fins for cooling. I've got this cheapest of the cheap emergency stop switches, about £6.50 from eBay. But I really couldn't pay the £35 that Schneider wanted for an emergency stop switch. Well that's marked out ready to cut so that the inverter can come through the board. But I'm leaving these pieces on here Hopefully I can screw the inverter on from the back into these. Well there we are with the sides on. Bit of packing to get it square. We'll let the glue dry and uh, come back to that later. Well this is taking shape. I've just used some 8mm copper pipe here, central heating pipe, as spacers on these four screws, which then hold this secure. And then, I've still got this spacer in, but I'll take that out later. That goes on there. It's mostly going to be an empty box. It's just to hide the wiring, really, that comes in and out of here. But it also is going to house this reversing switch as well. And then the three phase connector will go on there, something like. And then I'll cut this off a bit shorter. And this emergency stop button will go something like this. And I'll have some black conduit coming in from the socket coming over this way. Now it might seem a bit like overkill with all this box. Otherwise, this inverter would have stuck out a very long way and I was a bit worried it would get knocked. I think this should protect it. Sorry about the mess. I've got too many projects going on at once here. These are now screwed on the board and I need to drill a hole in this front plate for this switch. I'm going to use a step drill and we were talking about step drills last night on the ARW discussion live stream. And all the guys were saying how good these are. So let's give it a go. I want a 12 millimeter hole. Let's see if I can get the right size. Problem is I can't see where 12 is. <laughs> give me a minute. Well, it cuts a perfect hole and I managed to stop at 12 and not some other number which you always need to be careful.
careful about, of course. And that will go in there, like that. And I've put it to this side because I might actually put a speed control knob there. Instead of using this little tiny one, I might remote it to there. Fixed to the wall. Now I need to make a hole in here for this conduit which is coming across. There'll just be a plug on the end of a cable which will run through here, come into the back here, through that box there and into the inverter. Keep it all tidy, that's the idea. We're getting there slowly. It always takes a lot longer than I think it should. I've stained that wooden box just, and when it's dried it should blend into the wall a bit better. Next let's make a hole for the cables to come through. These hole saws are fine but they keep getting clogged up on wood. Hopefully this won't have to come off again now. You know, last week we had some glorious weather. I think we were up to about 20 degrees centigrade in the last week of March. I can't bring myself to say Celsius. Sorry guys. To me it's always been centigrade. I mean the thing with the hundred legs, we don't call it a celtipede, do we? It's a centipede. There's a reason for that. Although I don't think it actually does have a hundred legs, but never mind. I'm going to leave the emergency stop until later because I don't know exactly how that's going to be wired in. I think that'll look all right. I'll put a knot in this cable so that it can't be pulled through that way and then I'll bring it up behind out through this hole and then wire it to this. Strictly I don't need these eyes on but I think it makes a better job if I do this. Well that's the input and the output done. I've carried through the cable numbering 123, 123 for the three phases. I decided that the speed control knob on the front of the inverter is just too fiddly for everyday use and so I bought myself this 10k linear pot for about two pounds. Just heat shrink these on. I did use the heat gun in the end just for these sleeves here to hold them together although the wires are very similar colours here just by chance the centre is white in both cases and these will keep them together. It's wired up and it works it just needs tidying up. I need to fix that emergency stop switch to the wall. I said earlier it was super cheap about £6.50. Really it needs replacing with something better but I can't bring myself to pay £15 or £20 minimum um, when that one does actually work. So I'll just look out for one somewhere. Anyway, I'll zoom in now and show you the connections. I'll just start by pointing out a few things. Reverser switch, speed knob, original speed knob built in, run and stop. Now I'll zoom in a bit more. So looking at the wiring then, these three, blue, white, red, go to the speed control knob. Over here we've got pink and blue which come from the reverser switch and the reverser switch common is fed from here which is the PLC connection as it's called which is plus 24 volts. That white wire. Now that white wire is split and one side goes off to the emergency stop and it comes back to this position here which is X3. So these three connections here are X1, X2, X3 and they're programmable multifunction connections. <clears throat> and I've programmed this so that 
when there's 24 volts applied to here, the motor will run, and when the supply is cut, press the emergency stop. 24 volts is removed from here. You can see the inverter is on, and it randomly says 50.78 Hz. When I press run, the motor will start, and it will ramp up over 6 seconds, because that's what's set in the inverter. And you can hear the motor, I'm sure. If I press stop, it ramps down over 6 seconds. When it's running, I can adjust the speed by this remote knob here. Instead of using this small one that's built onto the inverter, which is a bit fiddly, I think it would be okay for testing. It's not so useful for uh, you know everyday use. I can reverse it by flicking the switch. It'll ramp down and then speed up in reverse over six seconds. If I hit the emergency stop, it'll stop the motor immediately, which is kind of what you want. If I rotate the emergency stop button to make it jump out, it will restart the motor. If I do that again, and now I press stop, it resets it. If I release the emergency stop now, it won't restart the motor. Now you might say, that, well that's a bit dodgy, you really not want it to work like that. But it means that I can connect the emergency stop to a foot pedal for my welding positioner. And then when I want the positioner to move, I just depress the pedal, and when I want it to stop, I let the pedal go. I've got at least two motors to drive with this inverter. The thing is, they're only occasional use motors. It means that when I switch the motors over, I'm going to have to change the settings on the inverter. But it's better than buying two inverters, and it's not very often anyway, actually. So this inverter is good for three quarters of a kilowatt or one horsepower. So I hope that's useful to you. Thank you for watching Haxby Shed. The end. It's now four days since we kicked off the competition for the Haxby Shed mug. And I said in that video, if you want a mug, leave me a comment. Now I just want to explain. I was asking people to say if they wanted to be in the competition or not in their comment. I thought that's what I meant, but my wife should have been a lawyer. And she's pointed out to me, people might think just by saying and leaving a comment, that's enough. So let me be clear. If you said, please enter me into the draw for the mug, you're in the draw. If you said, my wife's coffee would look nice in that, you're in the draw. If you said, that mug would go nicely on the end of my mill, you're in the draw. But if you just said, congratulations on 2,500 subscribers, you're not in the draw. If you really wanted to be in the draw, go back and edit the comment and then I'll make sure you're in. But you can imagine some people are not interested. I wouldn't want to award the mug to somebody who really didn't want one. I hope that's clear. It makes my wife happy. Now I've explained it again. Good luck.